Hello everybody, it's Matt from TDM Style and welcome back. Today's video is going to be all about hair dryers. To me, the hair dryer is one of our most important hairstyling tools, so I think it's something that's worth doing a little bit of research on so you really will know what you're getting. So whether you're in the market for your first hair dryer or if you're looking to upgrade what you currently have, this video is for you. So we're gonna be talking about the differences between say a $20 hair dryer and a more professional hair dryer, which generally range anywhere from $50 and up. So the first feature you wanna look at is power. The power is measured in watts and essentially higher wattage equates to a more powerful airflow. So generally in the $20 hair dryer market, probably the maximum power that you're going to find is somewhere around 1800 watts. So like I used to have this $20 Purple Con Air one and that maxed out at I believe uh, 1850 watts. So that was okay, but if we compare it to something like this Herstyler one that I'm using now, um, this is a $50 hair dryer, so it's on the cheaper side of the professional level ones, but this one has a um, low speed setting of 1800 watts and it goes up to 2000 watts for the high speed setting. Now, as the prices go up and up and you're looking at some more um, high-end professional models, you can see power ratings up into the 3000s of watts, but that's really overkill for a typical home user. It makes sense for a hair care professional who's gonna be using it every day in a salon. But for somebody at home, I would say if you get something around 2000 to maybe 2400 watts, you're going to be in good shape. The next feature you wanna consider are what the heating elements are made out of. So generally you will see two kinds of hair dryers out there, some that are labeled as ceramic heat and others that don't mention it at all. And that means that their heating elements are metal. The main thing to know here is that the ceramic ones basically just heat up more evenly so that results in a better distribution of heat to your hair and it just ends up being able to dry your hair a little bit more evenly and you have less worry about um, hot spots that could do potential damage. And this doesn't seem to drive the price up too much as I have seen plenty of uh, cheaper hair dryers that do have ceramic heating. The third feature you want to look at are negative ions. Now that might sound a bit weird, but that's to me one of the most important features that your hair dryer can have. And what this means is as you're blow drying your hair, that thing is actually shooting out negatively charged ions at your head. Now that might sound a bit strange, but if we get sciency here for a second, basically what this means is that those negatively charged ions are going to react with the positively charged water molecules in your hair. And the negative ions are gonna to help to break up those water molecules more quickly, so it's gonna dry your hair faster, and it also helps to smooth out your hair cuticles, so it's gonna leave your hair with a nice natural shine and help to reduce frizz. Once again, this doesn't seem to be a major price point factor as I have seen plenty of $20 hair dryers that have negative ion technology. So those are basically the big three that you wanna look out for. Power, ceramic heating, and negative ion technology. So now let's talk about some of the smaller features. First, you have the speed settings. So if we take a look at both this Herstyler and this Lamarca, they both have two speed settings, low and high. Um, I have seen some hair dryers with three, I don't really see the point of that. I'm always using my hair dryer on the highest speed anyway, so I don't think that this is something that is very important for me, um, so take that for what you will. However, this next one is very important in my opinion, and that is the heat setting. So when you're looking at a more professional hair dryer, you're going to find three heat settings, low, medium, and high. With some of the budget hair dryers, you might only get two, and those are typically low and high. So you're missing out on that medium setting, which can really be a bummer because for me, that's what I use for my most everyday hair drying. And if you have three settings, that's just gonna give you the most versatility with that. So you can use the high setting if you wanna create some really high volume. Uh, you have the medium setting for your typical everyday hairstyling. And then you have the lower setting, which um, will give you lower volume, a little bit more shine. And it's, uh, it's helpful if you're really trying to protect your hair from heat damage. This next one is related to that heat setting and that is the cool shot button. So as you might expect, the cool shot button is going to just change your hair dryer over so that it's blowing cold air. And I have seen a lot of the lower end blow dryers um, omit this feature. 
And personally, I think it's pretty important too because I always use that at the end when I'm finished blow drying. I use the cool shot button, which will help seal up your hair cuticles and basically lock your hairstyle into place. So if you buy a cheaper hair dryer that doesn't have that, you're just gonna be missing out on that ability. And this next one is not something that I ever really thought that I would need to consider about a hair dryer, but it turns out that it's one of my most favorite things about having a more professional one, and that is the power cord. So what you are going to find with, I think, all the cheap hair dryers is that they have just a thin piece of crap, really short power cord. Personally, I have not seen a cheap blow dryer that has a power cord any longer than three feet, which is really kind of stupid because unless you have an outlet that's like right next to your head, that's you're gonna have to plug it into an extension cord and that just gets messy. However, with the professional hair dryers, you can see that not only is the cord nice and thick, um, but it's also, it's at least six feet long. So you have a lot more mobility and just a lot more flexibility. And for me, I, that's just like really worth it. The next thing I wanna talk about is whether or not your hairdryer is going to have a removable intake cap. Now on all of the cheap blow dryers that I've seen, you are not able to remove this cap. And what that means is eventually that's going to get filled up with dust and gunk and you're gonna have no way to clean it. So with the more professional blow dryers, you can remove that. And so you can see this actually has a little bit of dust in there because over time, um, it's just, it's like any other type of fan, computer fans, room fans, anything. It's just, it's going to build up dust and grime and it's nice to have a way to be able to get in there and clean that as that's going to give your product more longevity. Next thing are nozzles. Now, most hair dryers, whether they're cheap or professional, will come with at least a condenser nozzle like this one and some come with more. So I don't think that's something that is necessarily going to affect the price point, but what I recommend is that you wanna make sure it at least comes with that condenser nozzle because I say just put that thing on there and never take it off. Some of them do come with other things like these volumizing nozzles and that sort of stuff, which I don't use those, but my main point is if you don't have the condenser nozzle, it just, the airflow is more all over the place. And so it's a lot more difficult to control where your hair is going and it could possibly lead to more poofiness or frizziness. And last but not least is just overall quality of construction. So what I've found in my experience, the cheaper hair dryers just feel cheap. I mean, they, they feel light and chintzy. So if you were to drop that thing onto a tile floor, which most people have in their bathrooms where they're doing their hair, um, it's quite possible that it will break. So with both of these more professional level hair dryers, you can, you can just feel that they have some weight to them. They feel solid. It feels like if I were to drop it, it wouldn't immediately break and cause me to have to buy a new one. So those are basically all the points and features that you're going to be looking at when you're in the market for a new hair dryer. So I recommend that you do spend a little bit more money and get at least a sort of entry level professional hair dryer rather than the cheap, say $20 ones. Of course, if you just have like a shitload of money to burn, you could buy say the Dyson hair dryer for $600, but uh, for most of us, I'd say that that's pretty out of the question. So my advice to you is spend at least $50 and make an investment because it's going to last you a lot longer and you're going to have better features and it's just gonna be a better hair dryer. So I will put a link to this Her Styler uh, blow dryer in the description below because I think that this is just the perfect blow dryer for somebody who needs something that's professional but not crazy and it's not gonna break the bank. So if you want one, I will have a link for you down below. I hope that you guys found this video helpful and informative. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you at the next one.